Hi, I'm Jim Blower. We're going to look at the Tier 4 14 foot backhoe loaders from JCB. Behind us we have a 3CX14, 3CX14 Super and the 4CX. All 14 foot dig depths, we're going to go and look at each one a little bit closer. Here we have the 3CX14, one cubic yard bucket up on the front, 74 horsepower Tier 4 final engine, a four speed manual transmission and triple gear pumps in the hydraulic system. 9 foot 3 cab height, fixed seat as standard and no toolbox. Moving over onto the 3CX14 Super, a 1.4 cubic yard bucket up on the front, a 91 horsepower tier 4 interim engine, power shift transmission, piston pump hydraulics and a full size cab, a 9 foot 9 cab height, the 3CX14 Super. And then lastly in the range, the 4CX14 Super. So the big front wheels up on the front give more stability, more ground clearance, three steer modes, the two wheel steer, the crab steer and the four wheel steer. 109 horsepower engine, tier four interim, power shift transmission and again piston pump hydraulics in the hydraulic system. Let's take a closer look at the 3CX14 Super. So here we have the 3CX14 Super and we'll do a little walk, walk around on that. And as we go through the machine, we're going to point out all the features and benefits of it. And they come back to two key features. We're trying to improve the machine for productivity and efficiency. Productivity, moving as much dirt per hour as possible. And efficiency is moving as much dirt per gallon of fuel burned. So all those things refer back to one of those two features. So starting up at the front, the 1.4 cubic yard bucket up here on the front, large front bucket. So every time we go into the pile and get a bucket full of dirt, we're taking as much as we possibly can. At 1.4 is the smallest, we go all the way up to a two cubic yard bucket depending on the application. The cutting edge on the bottom is reversible, so it's unbolted, spin it around, you got another cutting edge on there. This top edge on the top is parallel to that cutting edge, so the operator can look down from the cab, watch the bucket and see what angle the bucket's going into the pile at. So the flat top edge parallel to the cutting edge. So with a large front bucket on there, we able to have the power to push it around and fill it into the pile. So we have solid structures behind the bucket. The loader arm design, a good solid set of loader arms, the flat plate, the U-pressing on the inside to give us a good solid structure to lift from. Coupled between the two arms is this uh, torsion tube down the bottom. It's low, it's big, it takes all the twist and all the play out of the loader arms to give us a good solid structure to the arms just to go up and down. We don't have any flexing around with these loader arms. So good solid structures. So with the solid structures, we can then put a lot of power behind it. Over 6,500 pounds of standard on this machine of loader lift, 13,500 pounds of bucket breakout force. So good power for that large front bucket. You can option this lift cylinder up to over 9,000 pounds of lift if you need to have extra, extra lifting ability. Also in the loader arms, we have this linkage here, which is a parallel lift mechanism. It's a mechanical parallel lift. So as the lo uh, loader arms are lifted, the bucket stays parallel to the ground, both in the raise and the lower. So if you were to put an optional quick hitch on here with a set of forks, the forks would stay parallel to the ground in both raise and lower. Added to that, if you're just working with a bucket here, you go into the pile, you fill the pile, you've mounted all the dirt up or gravel into that bucket, and as you lift it up to go up to a truck, the bucket's not going to roll forward or backwards and lose material, it's just going to lift it straight up and then you can dump it into the truck and put the material where you want it. Again, that productivity, putting the material actually where you want it. So moving away from the loader arms into the drive line, it's a 91 horsepower tier 4 interim engine in here and behind that we have the JCB built 4 speed power shift transmission which we can option up to an auto shift which is a 6 speed transmission, standard is the power shift and then we go down onto the JCB axles. So the entire drive line built by JCB designed specifically for this machine and some of those things you can look at as we go around. The front axle, the differentials are set offset to one side, so the drive shaft now comes alongside the engine, not all the way underneath it. So if it comes up to the side, we can get it up and out of the dirt. We can lower the engine down, gives us a lower center of gravity for the machine for stability. Gives us good visibility down to the front because we've lowered the engine down. And we, as I said, we get the drive shaft out of the dirt. The front axle itself, the steering cylinder is behind the axle and it's up high, so it's protected. If we were to hit anything on the job site, be hitting the main, the main axle instead of the steering cylinders. Large final drives on both the axles, 
So a lot of oil in here to cool that final drive down as we're running around the site. Composite fuel tank reduces contamination and water in the fuel for that tier four interim engine. Round onto this back axle, limited slip differentials in the rear. So the operator doesn't have to do anything. There's no buttons or levers or pedals to engage. The machine senses when it needs to engage a limited slip differential and engage it and gets you out of trouble before you even know it's in there. So limited slip differential standard in the rear axle. So round onto the back end of the 3CX14 Super. Starting with the stabilizers here, very wide stabilizer stance. Gives us good stability to lift or to dig with the back end of the machine. We have good stability without the machine, as I mentioned before, lowering that center of gravity with lowering the engine, and the hydraulic tank and the fuel tanks. So the machine has a very low center of gravity. Coupled with a very wide stabilizer stance, we've got a very stable platform to dig and to lift from. This is a flip pad here. So we got down onto the concrete asphalt side. You can flip it over so these cleats dig into the dirt to give you more grip when you're working on the uh, open dirt site. Into the rear frame of the machine, two inch thick top and bottom plates, good solid structures, all that digging power and lifting power that we want in the backhoe has got to be held within the machine. So these top and bottom plates give us good solid structure throughout the machine. They're spread wide apart so we can get in for service access should we need to get up into the valve block or into the swing cylinders. So good access in. The hoses that come through the king post. The king post is moving side to side and the boom is moving up and down. So these hoses are constantly rubbing against each other as the back end's working. So we mount these in a manifold. So we've got the hoses going from here through a guide so they're not rubbing against each other. And then they're clamped on the other side up into the boom. All to prevent that hoses rubbing against each other and failing. We've got a swing lock here put that pin up to the front to stop the boom swing for travel. There's a boom lock here, operated from inside the cab to lock the boom up into the lock position for traveling. The boom itself, it's a box style boom, so everything goes inside the boom as much as possible. So we don't have any hoses hanging out the outside of the, of the uh, backhoe. Everything's protected, it's inside. So if you're working around a trench box, around trees, you're gonna be hitting the steel of the boom and not the hoses and, and cylinders hanging on the outside good solid structures throughout. An example of that is this keyhole casting here. This casting piece with the arrow on the top goes all the way through the boom. It's one solid piece and it pulls the stress away from one area. So good solid structures give us a good solid strong boom. Working down to the dipper, this is an extending dipper with extra dig on there and the narrower smaller part of the extra dig is the part that goes out. And the reason for that is when you reach this boom out you're sending the lighter part out and keeping the heavier part on the tractor. Again, adding to that stability. You can do more when the bucket's all the way out there because you're sending the lighter part out and keeping the heavier part on the tractor. With all extra digs, they, there is wear in there because this moves in and out. And to adjust that, we've got these four bolts on either side, so eight bolts in total. And to adjust it, you just undo the bolt, the nut, sorry, crank in the bolt and it takes all the slop it's, the shim is on an angle, so as it pushes it in, it pushes up the slide to take the slop out up and down. And as you push them in, it takes the slop out from side to side. So fully adjusting that extra dig to stop that slop. When you come back and spot the trench, you don't get the rattle. You just tighten eight bolts up and you keep the machine working and the optimum performance. Again, that productivity, keeping the machine working, and pulling dirt out of the trench, that productivity that we're looking for. Another thing with productivity is the length of the boom and the dipper. It's almost equal on this machine, allowing us to bring the bucket all the way up to the king post area here. So we can stretch it all the way out and dig a trench all the way close to the machine. So we've got a good workable trench. So we spend more time digging than we do repositioning the tractor. Again, that's productivity, keeping the machine pulling dirt out of the trench and keeping the productivity up. Round onto the back, here's the extra dig lock. Push the pin in, locks that extra dig for coming out. So when you're in travel mode, you've got the boom lock, the swing lock, and the extra dig lock, the whole back end locked up for going down the road. So the tipping link here, there's two positions for the bucket link to go into. The position it's in here is the power position, closest to the cylinder that's providing the power, gives us mass, maximum bucket breakout force. Moving this pin into the other position gives us more rotation. So when you're digging a, a vertical wall, say a graveyard or something where you need a square hole, it gives you more bucket rotation in this position. Also loading a truck, it closes the bucket in tighter to get up over the truck and stop losing material. Again, that productivity 
keeping material in the bucket and putting it where you want it. So more bucket rotation in here, more power and bucket breakout force in this position. And again, you can adjust it. The tipping link is standard, is this plain link here. Option is to put a lifting point on here, and that's where you would lift from. If you need to get into any of those lifting uh, applications. So that's the back end of the machine. Moving around to the rest of the tractor. On this side, again, limited slip in the rear. The hydraulic tank is mounted on this side, again, down low to get that low center of gravity and stability. An external toolbox to put any grease guns and chains and straps into. And the outside of the machine, so you're not dragging them all up into the cab. And then last, but by no means least, is the cab and the operated station itself. Available as an open canopy, or as you can see here, fully glazed cab with a heater, a, st uh, a heater with standard with a cab, or air conditioning that you can option onto that as well. Okay, so up at the front of the machine, we've got a tilt steering column to adjust to the operator's comfort. Transmission controls just on the left-hand side, forward and reverse, with the gear selector for the power shift transmission. You've got an instrument cluster at the front, with any warning lights that come on, air conditioning vents or heater vents around the front, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, switch on the right-hand side. You split brake pedals and the throttle down the bottom. Over to the side, we have the manual loader controls on the manual control machines with the transmission disconnect button on the front. Next to it is the auxiliaries for the front bucket, whether it be a six-in-one or a grapple that you put on the front. And then next to that is the parking brake. It's a secondary braking system, so you can pull it on, pull the brakes on, and then lock it on as a parking brake. Just behind that, we have our instrumentation on the side console. We have the instrument uh, cluster with the fuel gauge, the tachometer, the clock, and the water temperature. This machine now checks, does all of its daily checks itself. If there's any issue, it'll throw up the warning here and up on the front, and then it'll scroll through on the LCD display telling you what's wrong, whether it be engine water low, engine oil low, the machine does all those checks for you. Moving on from that is the heater and air conditioning controls, then all the switches for your lights and any other options that may be fitted to the machine and mounted on the side console down here, as well as the 12 volt power source for ch charging phones, etc. Moving around to the back, spin the seat around. So around to the back, a large opening window. The whole window is opens up to give us great visibility down into the trench. We also have a rain peak sticking at the top here, so rain's not coming down if you do operate in the rain. Standard controls on the machine. Classic controls, wobble stick controls, these are your two sticks to control all the back end, and the extra dig is on a pedal. We option up from these and get rid of this whole tower and put servo controls into the seat, so you get even more comfort with the servo controls, and that's the easy control option. And new with the tier four machine is the advanced easy control, whereas this right hand controller, when you spin the seat back to the front, becomes the loader control, and we get rid of all those manual levers. So everything is servo control in the advanced easy control machines. So there you have it, a backhoe loader for every application from the JCB range. The world's number one backhoe loader, JCB.